All right, well, we're very proud to have Joshua Ferris with us. Joshua, who is uh, the author of Then We Came to the End, National Book Award finalist, and now the author of The Unnamed. Uh, welcome to Borders. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. You told me earlier to call you Josh. Is it Josh, Josh or Joshua? Is fine. Yeah. Okay. Joshua is a little bit of a I mouthful. I usually go with what's on the book, but I'm, I'm good with Josh. Josh is good. Yeah. I'll respond. So Then We Came to the End was a breakthrough book. Uh, it got the attention of a heck of a lot of people. It was a, a great office farce. There was a lot of humor in it, a lot of real life, a lot of poignancy as well. The Unnamed goes in a totally different direction. I mean, I think a lot of people who started with Then We Came to the End who are like, hey, I like this Josh Ferris guy, they're going to jump to the Unnamed to get a totally different package. Um, what sort of prompted the, the sort of differences and the shift from one style to the other? I don't know. I mean, I, I, they probably could not be any different one from the other. But I think that my, my hope for from, from myself as a writer is to capture as much of the human experience as I possibly can. And the first book was uh, kind of lent itself to, to a more comedic mindset. Mm -hmm. And this book is about a mysterious illness and the love story at the heart of that illness. And it just required an entirely different tone and approach. So I think it just, I sort of allowed the story to dictate, you know, how, what, what kind of, uh, mode I was going to tell the story in. The story is about Tim, um, a very successful lawyer in, in New York, and his wife Jane. Um, and they've had a relatively happy life. There's been a couple instances of this strange disease that you refer to, mm -hmm. and then it then starts to grip him. And it's an odd disease where he can't stop walking. He just right. walks and walks and has to walk. And something takes over him. And that is the, the unnamed. It's a disease that nobody can identify. Right. Um, there's a darkness, obviously, to that. It's something he can't control, something that changes his life, changes the trajectory of everyone in his family's life. Were you thinking about this book before Then We Came to the End was finished, or was this something that came to you after that book was done? I think I was thinking about it. Um, I've probably been thinking about things that occur in the book for a long time, what it means to be sick, what it means to struggle with sickness, what it means especially to struggle with the sickness while trying to keep a family together and uh, all of the complications that being mortal implies. So I think that they came before then we came to the end, um, but things started to heat up in terms of my concentration once that book was through. And then we came to the end, there is a, a section that is all about cancer and, and the prospect of dying and the fear of dying. Um, and so that, that book can maybe be described as a comedic book with a, an undercurrent of seriousness. And I think I would probably describe The Unnamed as a, as, a, as a very serious book with an undercurrent of comedy. So I kind of flipped the, the style or the mode of the first book on its head and, and wrote the second book. The, the, the idea of till death do us part uh, plays such an important role in this book. Are these thoughts that you've had prior to um, just this whole idea of commitment and, and marriage and, and all that before this book? Or what was at the center of the unnamed? How did you start and pull that out? I, d I don't really know. I mean, I, I'm certain that being married had affected the way in which I approached the material. Um, I also come from uh, I suppose what you might call a rather illustrious line of divorcees. <laughs> My parents have, have uh, married a couple of times and divorced a couple of times, and now they're happily married, with, not with each other, but um, with other people. And I, 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 you know, I've always been uh, focused on what makes a marriage work and works, and what ma makes a marriage work and what doesn't. And it's a fascinating dynamic, and the possibilities for success and failure seem inexhaustible. So I think that you know when I when I was when I was considering this book and 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 and, and deliberately putting a married couple at the heart of it, it was essentially to explore by trial and error, simply through the the the, the process of writing, uh, what might happen to. Uh, a, a relatively strong marriage if Herculean effort were required to keep it together. And the struggles that, that Tim and Jane go through to remain together 
um, our individual struggles. Tim's struggle to be with Jane is Tim's struggles, are Tim's struggles. Jane's struggle to be with Tim are Jane's struggles. And yet somehow there's a dynamic that, that, that they share uh, that is created out of these individual struggles. And that dynamic is so, I think it's another thing that's unnamed. You know, it's something that you can't quite put your finger on. But they're equally making that effort. And it's that effort in the face of um, terrific and difficult uh, tasks that uh, make them unique individual and make their marriage a unique marriage. There's another piece to it, too. In addition to the husband-wife dynamic and the struggle, as you talk about, there's also the struggle to maintain a relationship with his daughter, with Tim's daughter, yeah. Tim and Jane's daughter, Becca. And it, it's a story that sort of stands on its own to some degree. Tim is a very busy lawyer, isn't as engaged in his daughter's life as maybe he'd want to be. And oddly enough, the disease in some interesting parts of the book brings them together. Yeah. There's a yeah. Buffy the Vampire yeah. Slayer segment, for instance, yeah. where they yeah. start to feel a kinship with one another, like a, a mutual understanding. Yeah. Um, how, when you sort of ex began to explore that, that, that child-parent dynamic, did you come up with the Becca character and where that was going to go? Well, I, you know, I mean, I think uh, one of the things that happens with Tim is that he's laid low and he becomes not a father and not a professional lawyer and not a husband, not, a, not any of these labels. He just becomes a man and a man who's suffering and a man who's trying to figure out what's wrong and how, how, try, try to figure out how to keep his life together. And when that happens, I think his daughter sees him in a different light. And he sees his daughter in a different light as well, because once he's been reduced to um, the basic essence of, of just, you know, maintaining his humanity, uh, he sees what he has failed to see uh, in Becca his, for a long time, because he's been distracted by his career and other, other things. So their coming together is a coming together that I think takes place on a human level uh, as much as it, as it is a, a, a daughter-father level. And I wanted that to be a central part of the book because I think that it, it reveals what makes these characters human when you're first introduced to them as daughter-father, you know, quite different things, as labels more or less. And then suddenly the sickness sort of strips that away and they become people that are just trying to connect on a, on a, on a more basic level. And, and, and I think that they do, through the course of the novel, do that in, in varying degrees of depth. We're witnessing the emergence of a very serious and incredible writer, but I know that uh, you know, there's still the then we came to the end that's in you somewhere, so where do you go next? I mean, you're still, this is brand new, I feel it's yeah. wrong to even ask about another book, but do you want to keep mixing it up like that? Is that part of the plan, or do you even have I think a plan? it's part of the plan, yeah. yeah. It's definitely part of a plan. I mean, I, I, I think I, I have a, a, a book, and, and, and I, I, uh, I am not following any formula. I create that formula, and then when I'm done with it, I want to bury that formula and, and start over. It doesn't make for a very pleasant six months when I'm first starting out, but uh, I think it's very important uh, for me uh, to never repeat. And to also, you know, I mean, I'm just, a, uh, I think it's inc incredibly important for a writer to be curious. And I think curiosity will take you to a lot of different places. And my curiosity is, um, is sometimes uh, an, aff an affliction that I can't, I can't put off, I can't go to sleep because I want to do more reading or, or, you know, study something in deeper detail. Um, so I think that uh, what I'll try to do probably next is, is, is uh, something entirely different from the first and the second book. Yeah. Well, that's good for all of us. In the meantime, though, The Unnamed is a fabulous book. Uh, really gripping, really poignant, and uh, I couldn't put it down. I read it in basically two sittings over the course of uh, about a 36-hour period. I know you're going to have a lot of new fans out there, and I uh, wish you all the best. Thanks well, for thank stopping you by the much. borders. Thanks. It's nice talking to you. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks.